In this lesson, we're going to learn mechanism of ventilation. The ventilation is a rhythmic expansion of the lungs during inhalation and exhalation. That means rhythmic in expansion and contraction of the lungs during inhalation and exhalation. So when we take air into the lungs, we can call it breathe in. And this is called inhalation. Then we take air out of the lungs, breathe out. It is called exhalation. So rhythmically inhalation, exhalation take place in the lungs. Each time uh, new air comes to the lungs, oxygen comes to the lungs and gas exchange. And after that, oxygen going to the blood, carbon dioxide is going to the lung side. And then the next event is exhalations. So we're going to learn uh, how this process takes place in the lungs. Uh, first, we take breathe out. That is exhalation. Now, before we're going to learn both uh, exhalation and inhalation, we're going to understand one common thing. The common thing is if we see the thoracic cavity, so this is the thoracic cavity. In this thoracic cavity, we can see uh, ribs which covered uh, all the surroundings and the, uh, between the uh, abdomen and the chest, we have uh, diaphragm. So diaphragm, uh, If you look at uh, the difference between two ribs, this is a one rib and this is a one rib. We can find two group of muscles, the muscles which is located uh, out like this. They are called external intercostal muscles. The muscles which are attached from the inside like this, they are called internal intercostal muscles. And if you look at the diaphragm, diaphragm is also consists of muscles and connective tissues. So middle part is mostly the muscles and the surrounding is connective tissues. So this muscle can contract and relax. The external Intercostal can contract and relax. Internal intercostal can contract and relax. Diaphragm muscles uh, can contract and relax. So this muscle contraction is one uh, very important to understand ventilation mechanism. So breathing out, What is going to happen uh, to these uh, three type of muscles? First, 
a diaphragm. So we take the intercostal muscles. So external and the other one is internal. So external intercostal muscles relax. And internal intercostal muscle contract. So how do you uh, draw it if this is a rib? So internal then contract. Internal intercostal contract. External intercostal relax. This is a rib. Then a diaphragm. Diaphragm, relax. Diaphragm muscles, relax. Right, now we keep this uh, aside, this theory part. Now we try to understand uh, if what happened to the Whole thoracic cavity when we exhale. So you can you can try it. So you try to uh, make a big exhalation. You try to remove gas out of the lungs. So when you try to remove gas out of the lungs, you can feel your chest is going uh, this direction and also this direction. So if you want, you can keep your hand on the chest and try to uh, breathe out. You can see your hand is going uh, inward, inward and downward. So this is inward and this one is a downward, downward. So you feel the chest wall like this originally, and then it's going uh, in downward and inward. It is going to shrink or reduce like this. So this is the movement of the chest wall then. It's just going inward and downward. So if you look at the diaphragm at relaxed stage, Diaphragm is, the shape is like this. When it relax, it get this uh, dome shape. It is called dome shape, now it's relax. And whole chest walls reduce the size. So now this is a graphical representation of the chest. The diaphragm relax and the chest walls are moving inward and downward. So what happened to overall volume of the thorax then? Overall volume of the thorax, thoracic cavity reduced. So 
So volume reduced. So what happened when volume reduced to the pressure? So we know the relationship volume and pressure. This has inverse relationship. Volume reduced, pressure increase. If volume reduced, pressure increase. Now inside of the thoracic cavity, the pressure increase. So this is atmospheric pressure. Now this is the thoracic cavity pressure. So atm atmospheric pressure and thoracic cavity pressure, now there's a gradient difference. There's a gradient, there is a difference. So what is the difference? Difference is pressure is high, and this side pressure is low now. But this difference is very small. It is not much because we know atmospheric pressure is 760 mercury millimeter, and this could be a few uh, mercury millimeters less. For example, uh, it could be a uh, oh high. So less than high, just uh, if it is 760 millimeter, this is going to be very slightly few millimeters high because of the volume decrease. As a result, the air flow is this direction. High pressure to low pressure, air can move. So this goes uh, breathe out. So air is going out. Now this is important to remember so this is what exactly happening. So if you want, you can remember like this, Dr. Bore. Diaphragm, relax, breathing out, relax, external intercostal. Diaphragm, relax, breathing out, relax, external intercostal. If external intercostal relax, internal should be contract. One should contract. Then uh, volume reduce, pressure increase in the lungs, and then uh, air can move from high pressure to low pressure like this. Okay, now we're coming to the breathing in. Inhalation. Now, inhalation is opposite of exhalation. So we can write now, looking at this internal uh, intercostal muscles, right? So we can write here, what has happened to the intercostal muscle. Now, intercostal muscle here, external relax, internal contract. So opposite is, uh, external contract, internal, relax. Then diaphragm, here relax and here contract. So we can write uh, by looking at this. So this is the important thing to remember. After that, we can write it down. In inhalation, opposite is happening. External contract, internal relax, diaphragm contract. Then uh, what is going to happen to the lungs? So you can try it. You take a deep breath. So when you take a deep breath, you can feel the lungs, chest wall is moving upward and outward. So this is upward, outward. You can practice now. You try to keep your hand on the chest and breathe in. You can see your hand is moving upward and outward. So it was like this. Now it is moving this direction. Right now, if we try to see uh, the volume, total volume of the chest wall, 
uh, inside the thoracic cavity. It is increased and the diaphragm is flat. It's not a longer dome shape, it is flat. So this get uh, flattened, the diaphragm, and there's no dome shape anymore. So volume increase. So volume increase, pressure decrease. So this could be 70, 160 mercury millimeter, and few millimeters lower could be 754, 56 around, and then uh, air can move in now because pressure is low here and pressure is high here. As a result, during uh, inhalation, air is moving in due to low pressure inside the thoracic cavity. <laughs>